Thank you, members of the press. Council, you can go first and address the media. Uh, we have finally managed to see our clients. And, uh, yeah, he's in high spirit. And uh, we have gotten our instructions. But from the look of things and uh, the pressure that the president have had, it is clear that uh, the police may not act independently. Because in the words of the president, he must pay for, for what he said. So we... We are looking to look at the alternatives that we have and possibly go to court because we know they will not attend to him today. We came in the morning, they assured us that they will be here. They never came through. The police deposited him here and gave instructions that no one should see him, including the lawyers. We are not given access to him. It is just now that we have managed uh, to, to see him. But he's in high spirits. He will run the full race. We know our client is innocent. He has that freedom of expression. And what he said is different from what the president has said on his press briefing to say that he said that he picked a foolish man as it were. Obotutu simply means a person who is ignorant. And ignorance should be understood in the context that he used it and not necessarily foolishness. We hope the police will be able to advise and say this actually means something else and not what the president needs. We hope he gets a fair process in this regard. We hope he does. If he doesn't, or if anything threatens that fair process, we'll not hesitate but to engage the courts. So no charge so far? <coughs> no charge, no arrest. Council, there are rumors that he, he might be taken to Sulawesi. Can you address that? Well, th those rumors remain rumors, but with the sentiments that are there, that's a possibility, but the truth is, if a person is, uh, is said to have committed an offense in Kawata, it should be in Kawata where he should be arrested. It is the location that gives jurisdiction to a magistrate. They can't take him to Solwezi and say he'll be tried in Solwezi because the report was in Solwezi. The place where the offense is alleged to have been committed is here in Osaka. So it should be here in Osaka. Anything outside that would be illegal, and we'll know that it's persecution and not necessarily intended to make the ends of justice. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, like we've always said, we normally had a challenge with the statements made by His Excellency the President. Uh, just this morning, when he was addressing the nation, he assured the Zambian people that uh, prolonged detentions of suspects or accused persons is a thing of the past. He gave examples that if somebody was picked at 12, by 14 hours, he'll be given bond. Somebody is picked at 14, by 16, he'll be given bond. Bona Bonaka Chinda was picked at 05. Uh, I don't know what time this is. Uh, yeah. And this is what we keep saying. And we keep saying that uh, when you listen to the president and you look at the realities on the ground, one gets the impression that uh, the president may be living a different country altogether. And I think that uh, that is a gap that must be closed. Uh, if the president is going to rule this country and, uh, you know, uh, rule it with integrity, he must be able to attest to the facts as they uh, occur on the ground. But as it is now, if you listen to the president, uh, you, all of you journalists have appeared together at the police station many times. I'm sure you, you wondered when you heard the president saying uh, prolonged detentions are a thing of the past. We are also concerned, you know, with um, um, the address that the president made. Uh, predominantly, uh, the president was attacking citizens. Uh, we expected uh, uh, some higher uh, level you know, of discussion coming from the president, especially that he hasn't spoken to the nation in a very long time. If you followed that discussion, it's very clear that the president has not healed you know, from the past mistreatment, if any. Uh, the president is still bitter. He's still bitter and has displayed bitterness against citizens. I want to take this opportunity, fellow Zambians, to appeal to the president that you are now the president of this country. Find it in your heart to heal and begin to govern this country with fairness. We know now that uh, uh, from what came out of the president's uh, mouth, uh, it will be very difficult for brothers and comrades like Nagachinda to have uh, a fair uh, treatment at the police and indeed um, a fair trial at, uh, at the court. 
the president took it upon himself to even comment on matters that are before court, where Honorable Nakachinda had said, uh, take Amatako, Amatako Panch. The president delved into that discussion. These matters are before court, and this is what we are worried about. Uh, we are further worried that uh, the doctrine of a separation of powers uh, may be threatened, given what the president was talking about. Uh, the president was uh, making reference to new people at uh, DEC, uh, new people at SEC, and the new chief justice. We really don't know what that meant. You know, if you were to draw a, a golden thread through what the president said, it, it raises more questions than answers. And we are saying, if this country is going to be governed through uh, using the rule of law, as the president himself uh, uh, proclaimed, it must be done respecting the doctrine of separation of powers. The judiciary must be distinct from the executive. Uh, but the statements that the president was making when he was addressing the nation is now leaving um, uh, much to be desired. And we want to encourage the president that if indeed he desires to govern this country using the rule of law, let him respect the different organs of the state uh, going forward. And uh, let him also desist from commenting on matters that are before court. Yeah, but of course what is also uh, 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 pleasing to us is that um, uh, the president constructively admitted that he met Miringo by saying he did not meet Miringo for purposes of discussing immunity, but he did meet Miringo. So for those of us that were doubting as to whether that meeting uh, took place, it's now clear that uh, for one reason or the other, the president did meet Miringo. Let's say that he didn't meet him for purposes of um, uh, uh, immunity. Then we want to ask a question, because uh, uh, Miringo stood accused. Was it that uh, the president was interfering in those criminal proceedings? If he met Miringo when Miringo was already appearing, appearing in court, what was the reason for that meeting? Yes, he may not have met him for purposes of uh, uh, discussing the immunity, but for what reason would he have met him? He should have been more clear in, in telling the Zambian people why he met Miringo. So we are happy that uh, at least in one way or the other, the president did admit that he met Miringo. And for those that were doubting, uh, they should now be clear that he met Miringo, but maybe not for purposes of discussing the immunity. So the Zambian people are interested. They want to know that uh, if a person is, is who stands charged, you know, begins to meet the president, what are they discussing? And I think those, those are questions that you yourself, the journalist, uh, the journalist must have. Yeah, so I think uh, as I give um, the comrade uh, uh, Mamba to, to, to also say something, I want to repeat that uh, the president must find it within his heart to him. It's very clear that he's bitter and bitter against citizens. Because when the president speaks, when the commander in chief speaks in the manner that he did, Nakachinda will not get fair treatment. Nakachinda is unlikely to get fair trial because the president was indirectly giving directives to those people that are investigating these cases, to the people that are handling cases that are before court. And I think that is not fair. You can't in one breath say you govern using the rule of law and uh, using the same mouth you begin to give uh, uh, directives, uh, for instance, to uh, people that are carrying out these investigations against your own citizens. It's high time the president realized he's president of the state, he's president of uh, the citizens of Zambia and begin to protect the citizens as opposed to victimizing them. That's what I have to say. Um, most of the matters have been dealt with by Honorable Munduwile, uh, but I need, I need to reiterate that the constant reference to matters in court by the head of state is regrettable. The president should desist from discussing individuals, personalities, and matters that are in court. They are prejudicial, they are subjudice. So I think um, the emotional display by the president at this press conference is also another matter for worry. Um, I think the president should stick to issues. Uh, he shouldn't display the kind of emotions we saw today. On the issue of uh, the KCM former liquidator, there are concerns here. The president keeps on saying that whoever could have done this is on their own. But the buck stops with the president. Why hasn't he cracked the whip? Why hasn't he fired those people that probably gave immunity to Midingo? So you see duplicity. In one breath, the president says they are on their own. In the other, he's not dealing with the matters. So there is a sense of disappointment. And then lastly, I have been with you here, I think since 9 o'clock at the police station. And um, Mr. Nakachinda has not been attended to. It has taken us almost four hours for us to see him. 
um, uh, there are these concerns that is not the matter is not being processed. They are using the law to punish Nagachenda. That's not the purpose of the law. This is what we even say against the fight against corruption. Do not use it as a tool to fight your opponents, to punish your opponents, or to attempt to destroy the opposition. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.